Good day to everybody. I want to thank the conference organizers for the opportunity to address you second year in a row. And today we, you will see the development of those players who were with here with us last year. Among them we have Tatiana Novikova. Unfortunately, Timofey Deripaska could not make it this time. He played in the final of a Category 2 tournament today in the city of Hantemansisk. He very much wanted to be with us today, but couldn't. Those in the audience who were here last year, could you please raise your hand? About 30% it, it looks. Many things happened since last presentation. Together with Alexei Viktorovich, we visited a, conf a conference in Serbia. I also traveled to the European Coaches Conference in Belgium, spent 2,000 hours on court, attended about 20 tournaments of various categories, held both by Russian Tennis Tour, or RTT, and by Tennis Europe. And in this brief appearance today, I will try to tell you what we believe are the most effective and the most practical things that help our players achieve their results. Today we will start with five players. Let me briefly tell you about them. The boys are all uh, were all born in 2009. Demian is from our academy's branch in St. Petersburg. Others are from Moscow. They still do not play RTT tournaments. They play green ball tournaments. And they all went through 10S program from the beginning, both red and orange ball. Now they have, they have started with green balls. The girls, Tatiana Novikova and Maria Lanina, are of birth year 2008. Tatiana won, won six RTT tournaments this year, playing up one year in age, that is 2007's birth year. Maria finished the third in several events. She was later to start playing RTT tournaments, still yet to win titles there. Let's start with some physical conditioning. We agreed with the conference organizers that we would cover all areas of our training, including fitness training. Guys, take your jumping ropes and come here. One little digression. We have two cameramen filming the presentations by Alexey Viktorovich and myself, and these will be accessible on, on YouTube in the near future, so you don't need to worry much recording with your cameras. It will all be available for review in good quality. I would like to start with... Let's just do some jumping, regular forward. We use holistic approach to coaching, starting with youngest kids. This means that from the first steps in 10S program, we can not only work on strokes technique, but also on tactical skills, athleticism and mental preparedness. And all that combined allows us to achieve better results. In tennis, the player's result is a puzzle that we put together of various aspects. And if your student plays better than the one of some other coach, it is likely that you have put more pieces into that puzzle than the other person. While that other coach might have better grasp of technique or tactics, the result lies in the sweet spot of all these various things. And as the players grow, you will need to put more and more minor and fine things into that puzzle. Take Andrei Rublev, for example, who said that his recent fast rise in rankings mostly resulted from changes in nutrition. He amended his approach to nutrition and that gave a boost to his results. Now backwards. Here are some bullet points for 8 to 10 year age group, which we will go into more detail. The item on using 10S system for technical, tactical, physical and mental training of a player. We try to keep kids within 10S system as long as possible and to play with green balls. And my last slide will be about this theme. We will talk about RTT tournaments held with yellow balls and so on. Technical skills as broad theme. That is development of all elements of technique during a training cycle. You may not hit overhead smash daily, but at least on a weekly basis you need to go through all technical ingredients, including volleys, drop shots, overhead, dry volleys, serve, returns. All these elements should be included into every single training cycle for kids starting with orange balls age. Fitness training. We look for all-round development of physical conditions uh, for, of players. During tennis practice sessions, we work on speed, agility, 
balance, we will demonstrate all this in a moment. Now with crossed hands. Do 30 crossed and then with shuffle steps. Tactical skills from early age. We have to explain to the kids the immense role of tactics, tactics in tennis. They'll have to learn decision making, set their tactical priorities, position themselves on the court, and to understand which factors matter for those decisions, like their own position, the position of the opponent, and the type of the incoming shot. Shuffle steps now. During our warm-up, we mainly include ex exercises with jumping rope and with balls, because those allow not only to warm up the body, but also to improve kids' coordination skills and their nerve-to-muscles system develops better, as the exercises grow more and more difficult with time. And this warm-up becomes not only body warm-up, but also mental warm-up as well, as the kids switch on their mind to the training session. Now backwards. That is to say, we forget about these sorts of usual rotation of feet and arms, instead try to do as many exercises as possible that would challenge the body coordination skills, which not only warm up, but also develop the players. Double jumps now. Double jumps, Marshal. Take two balls each. Demian is not in the same training group as others. Some drills could be new to him, so not everything might work out right away. And it will be more interesting for you to see kids at different stages of their command of these drills. Bounce off the court with both hands. We develop eye-to-muscle link and we pay a lot of attention to the non-dominant arm because its agility needs to necessarily develop in order for their body to grow without disbalances. Shuffle steps now. By linking the hands, eyes and the ball, they improve their rhythm, ability to control the ball with the eyes. Don't catch the ball, Lyosha. Don't catch. Just bounce. Now left and right with different rhythm. Change the rhythm. This is more difficult. This is more difficult because there is second rhythm involved. Alexey Viktorovich has left with the ladder. Could you please fetch a letter? Natalia Thank you. Okay, well done. Now change the, the hands pace from simultaneous to interchanged and back. An exercise with change of rhythm. I think Tatiana Ivanovna Kuznetsova showed these sort of exercises when she was presenting an Orgufk, Russian State University for Sports, with 11 and 12 year old girls. You can draw a lot on her methods. This kind of training I have seen uh, her players doing, as well as other coaches using them. While we are waiting for a letter, let's take the rackets and show coordination skills. Keep a ball on the racket. Keep the ball on the racket. We try to do ladder drills using balls and rackets, bouncing balls. Just one ball, Demian. Look at what Masha is doing. Tani is doing what I have asked. Demian, please use chopper grip, the one you use for your serve. Losha, chopper grip. You don't play with this side of the string bed. Now with bouncing the ball up. Demian, use the other side of the racket. Again, here they improve coordination skills. They learn to adjust to the ball and to control it. Alexei, no shifting of racket size for now. 
Now move backwards, Marsha. We use the ladder to improve coordination, not for speed. The drills have to grow in complexity periodically. Now shift the racket. One more thing. When they do the ladder drills without rackets and balls, they often tend to look downward to their feet. And that is, no, that is too bad. Try to make the kids do these drills keeping their eye focus high, since they, uh, since they will have to look forward during a match rally. So let them develop that habit, instead of uh, watching their feet. So at least they should have a ball on their racket, even if not bouncing it. Thus they will learn to keep the, the head straight and to control the balance. Crossover steps, keeping a ball on the racket. Crossover. Faster, faster. We insert these drills at the beginning of a tennis practice session because now backwards because we are at certain advantage compared to fitness coach who works with the kids after tennis because kids come to us still fresh and rested and not all of the kids have fitness training at completely separate time from tennis so while they are fresh at the beginning of tennis practice we can develop their coordination skills and agility when it is most effective to do because after tennis practice they start fitness training already somewhat tired and the effectiveness of these kind of drills will not be the same. We will start with green balls, but Maria, Alexei and Tatiana have been playing regular yellow balls for a long time, to my deep regret, so they might feel a bit uncomfortable with green balls. Then we will shift to yellow balls. We are a bit limited in target placement because of spectators sitting over there. Let's do regular cross-court backhand with recovery. Uh, from the center of the court. You have to necessarily control the recovery from a shot. The shot is finished only when they cross the center line. Watch out for kids to recover correctly after the shot and to get into right habit in terms of the moves on the court. Tanya, now with the turnaround. Now move the racket around the body. I will cover a bit their training hour schedule in a minute. Losha, now one leg hopping, then change legs. You probably saw these drills from Alexei Bogomolov. He showed those with 12 to 14 year old students. And the rationale behind these drills is to create more tricky conditions for the kids than in a regular rally and to develop extra coordination skills, which will help them, help them in an awkward or uncomfortable body positions during a match. Marsha, left shoulder. Now to the baseline. Let's do forehand down the line with a turnaround. Faster, faster. Do the turnaround on the move. Marsha, turn around on the run. First you start to move, then do the turnaround. Faster, faster. Faster. 
Now move the racket around the body. Kids love these drills. They like to learn something new, to challenge their previously learned skills. Collect the balls. Well done. The main factors that I will cover for this age group. First one that we have just shown is body control, racket control and ball control. The main thing you have to coach your students of this young age is to control the body. They have to learn to get to the contact point really fast, to keep their balance and to recover fast after the shot. The kids have to have advanced body coordination skills to be able to do this, as well as balance, speed and agility. We cannot ignore either of these aspects during our training sessions. And if the kids do not do separate uh, fitness training, then you should necessarily include these elements into tennis practice sessions, including speed development. The opponent will be constantly trying to get them into uncomfortable positions, to lose the balance, uh, so that the earlier they learn to move correctly, the, mo the more chances they will have to succeed in this game. The second item is working on technique with basket feet versus live ball. Tennis system allows to implement many live ball drills in training right from the early stages. Dimian, focus please. When we work on technique development, when we work on specific stroke shape, we use the basket. When we work on improvement, we do it live ball. Masha and Tani here, boys on the other side. One ground stroke, one volley from half court. Losha, take the basket on that side. One ground stroke, one volley. You play down the line. We have three players on the other side. They will interchange. Normally we do this drill for one and a half to two minutes each. It will take seven and a half minutes overall. We will cut it short here now. Dimyan, you wait for your turn. Let's go. Losha, you, you do with Masha. Take a ball. While they're playing, I will talk about their training schedule. Let's start with Tatiana. Last year she had one individual session for one hour per week and three sessions in a group. Now she's going to have more individual hours to counteract the slippage of technique due to playing tournaments with yellow balls this year. So we will have to pay more attention to this, to keep the technique clean. And this would be hard to, to do without more individual practice. Lyosha, you have to interchange with other player and then with the other. Daniel has been playing tennis for one year. He joined us in September last year, went through Orange Ball program. He still has three groups and one individual hours per week. He is motivated, he likes it. That is why, uh, having played tennis for just one year, he has progressed quite substantially. Dimyan and Lyosha, you change with the girls. With green balls, they are able to control the ball, they can play with each other, they do not need a basket. Lyosha, get your feet ready. Maria has two individual training sessions a week this year, up from once a week last year, and also four group practice sessions. Alexei is originally a student of Pavel Chekhov. At our academy he only does group training starting from September this year. Dimyan is training in our in, in St. Petersburg. I can't tell his training schedule exactly, he may tell it uh, himself later. You see that despite their young age, they have no visible problems with volleying. They like it a lot. This drill resembles the real match situation in the sense that they have to volley on the move rather than being stationary, waiting for the ball. They execute shot in a rhythm resembling a real match. Although they play short balls here, they can do the same drills from the baseline, it is not difficult for them.
Listen to me. Listen. Normally they can keep a single ball in play for a few minutes like this, in our regular training session. But they look just a bit nervous here, perhaps. Let's all go to the net and prepare for the next drill. Let's play king of the court. We have two kings and three challengers trying to knock the kings out. Demian, what have I said? Come to the net, focus. Give me the rackets and pick the kings. Everybody loves to pick the king. Let, let Demian do this, as he traveled here by airplane. Turn away. Two numbers from one to five. Okay, number one and two are the kings. Kings on that side. To knock out a king, one needs to, to win two points against him. The king has to take 11 points to win the game. Yes, double Ellis count. So we have this warm-up in the form of a game with keeping the score. The kids switch on immediately. We almost never just do warm-up hitting exchange from the baseline for no purpose. We either put cones right away to target depth of the shots or do some competitive exercise like this to keep score. As little as possible of shot exchange without any goal. They should always have to have some technical or technical or fitness task to comply with. King is knockout. Count your points aloud. Masha, quicker. Go to Demian's side of the court. Take position. One of the important tactical elements that we have to teach the kids before they start playing tournaments is to take position on court. Often children get stuck in the middle of the court after a shot, and you have to correct this behavior during the earlier stages of their training. So, taking the position. Testing, testing. This one is much better. This drill teaches them to control short's depth, because having hit a, sh a short ball, they would allow their opponent to move uh, closer to the net and to get into advantageous position. They try to keep the ball deep, to play actively and confidently, and we achieve high density of shots during the session. Nobody is standing and waiting for his turn to hit for too long. Four kids are in play and one is moving to prepare for his point. And if you play well and become the king, you will have a stream of con constantly changing opponents with various styles of play. Alexei loves drop shots, somebody else likes to keep the ball in play defensively for longer, Daniel likes to approach the net and finish with the volley. You constantly have to, s to solve various tactical challenges. Feet. Watch what your feet were doing. The issue was not with the arm. For Alexei, Maria, Tatiana, it does not make, make much difference whether it would be green balls or yellow. They would do the same with the either. But other guys sh uh, would be in a more difficult situation, that is why we started with green balls. Dimian, excellent drop shot. Okay, let's warm up the serve. Enough. Do the serve warm up. This game is played to 11 points and it takes 5 to 7 minutes. After it everybody is warmed up from the baseline, everybody is switched on to more dynamic drills and, and games. Building on what Alexei has said, we have to pay a lot of attention to serve and return in our practice. These are the key shots in tennis. I wrote an article for Junior Tennis magazine, it will be published in next issue, with, with, uh, with substantial arguments to this regard. And Alexei was speaking about it as well. We really put a lot of effort into these two key shots. This is now acknowledged by most coaches. It was proven many times by statistics. And if we do not focus enough on the serve, we are going to let down our players. For at least half an hour on each training session, we do various drills involving the serve and return. Let's go. We will play similar king of the court game, but this time cross court. 
Let's pick the kings. Turn away. From one to five. Dani and Losha to receive. They have two serves and play point cross court. We do this drill often as part of the warm up. Yes, you play cross court against Losha. Tanya won a tournament in Istra on Thursday, having considered just one game. Admittedly, the draw was not strong enough. It's the same, two points to knock out the king. When somebody gets to six points, he is to change the serve boxes with the neighboring king, no matter how many points the other ki uh, king has got. Okay, one of the kings is knocked out. Masha, a bit closer to the corner. It's okay, it's okay. Well, let's collect the balls. I think everybody has got the main message. Let's get the balls quickly and do a couple more drills with green balls and then move to yellow ones. Which tactical situations are the most frequent in 10, in, in ten under uh, matches? Firstly, it is this return of second serve. At this age, the first serve is, is still too weak and prone to errors. Uh, that is outside of the top 10 players. So the return of serve is the most key and most frequent situation for this age group, because uh, the, the percentage on first serve is too low, the point often starts with second serve, and the player who is good at second serve return immediately gets the advantage and wins many of his, uh, point of his return games, and vice versa. Both serves of, the play of your player deserve a lot of attention, because if your student only puts the soft and short ball into play, the leaders of this age group will be crushing him with powerful returns. They would not even get to the baseline exchange, so your student's ability to hold the ball in play for a long time will be in vain. So should we do the dry volley? Okay. Two of you here, three there. You play two points in a row on this side. Let Dimyan and Losha start on this side and three others go to, the, uh, to do dry volleys. You play two points each on the whole court. They play one point each. Where did I leave the racket? They will need to have a good drive volley in the near future, because those opponents who do not play active tennis will try to massively moonball them, and that is why we spend a lot of time on mastering drive volleys. Take more defensive position deeper down there. Dimyan, please move back as well. Let's go. Next one. You stay, you stay. Two points in a row. Dimyan, more focus. Next, Demian. They do not know which side I will be feeding the ball to and have to adapt to in, in order to win a point. Do not try to create too easy situations for them. Let them constantly adjust to uncertainty. Change the angle of the incoming ball. Do this drill from one side, then, uh, then from the other. They have to constantly make adjustments to any conditions. Well done. Next, next. These boys are 2009 birth year. They still do not play RTT events. 
Поменялись. Change now, Masha. That is four out of five mark. It will get better. Drive. Drive volley. Decision making. That was a wrong decision by Marie. We will work through this episode at practice. She started to move into the court without analysis of the trajectory of the ball. And that is why I lost the point. It is not a technical error. It is a decision making error. Clear the ball. Losha, you look like you want to do the drive volley. Go there. Turn it to the defense side. Ready? Quicker. Move forward quicker. There is an athletic component here as well. They need to move quickly to the ball to do a proper drive volley and also to do, to do sideways spurts to return those drive volleys. Intensity level should be similar to a real match. You have little time for standing idle. Next, next, go. Is it in? Out. Masha, you have run too far past the best contact point. Out. Okay. I feed you a short ball, you attack it and continue to the point from position at the net. That is another frequent tactical situation, when the opponent hits a soft and short ball at you. Some kids who have confident strokes from the baseline often can get confused and make errors on those short balls. So we have to work on this setup regularly during the practice. Same order. You do two points and you do one point each. Next. Feet. Put your feet on the ground before you hit the ball. Next. They make their own decision whether to approach the net or to return to the baseline, depending on how good they believe their attacking shot was made. And the last drill. Daniel, you go to the defense side. Demian to attack. Masha to defend. An attack from the center of the court. The opponent will often play into the center of the court. We run around and attack with forehand. Ready? Where should your, where, sh where should your ready position be? Deeper. Next. It was out. Dimian. Two points each on this side. Make the space for your forehand and attack. Demian, did you want Masha to knock off the computer? Next. Run around. Next. Watch the distance. Dimian, do not stand so close to the court, or you will have to miss your turn. Be focused. Go, go, go. Here you had the, that situation with a short ball. She handled it well.
Well done. Collect the balls and the marks quickly. We are done with green balls. Let's proceed to yellow ones. Danya, thank you. You have finished. Two more play situations for this age group and then we will bring in other players. You guys can start a, a warm-up. Начинаем потихоньку разминаться, старше. Хорошо. Давайте здесь Таня и Димьян здесь, Маша и Алексей там. Упражнение следующее. Вы играете по два пункта здесь, один пункт на этой стороне. Часто тактическая ситуация, когда вы играете с бомбардированными бомбами в if you, hit the, if you hit the target area and then win the rally, you receive not one, but two points. We play to 15 points, a changeover after eight. These players know which side they will, be, uh, they will get a ball to, they will have this advantage. So we balance this by giving two points on the other side if they win after hitting the target. Move back, Ilyan. Tanya, you play two points. Let's go. A moon ball to backhand. You do the footwork. You defend, and now the point rally starts. Next. Quick into the court. At the moment they are still a bit confused with the ball bounce. The green ball was bouncing slightly shorter. Next one, change. 2-1, right? Be bold. That was not a technical error, but a tactical one. Masha was in doubt about her shot selection. She was making the decision too slowly and made an error in result. Bear in mind that the kids often make errors not because of technique, but because of mistakes in decision making. Out. Next. Yes, next. Stop before hitting. Last one. Now a tie break in teams. Yes, go ahead. They will play a tie break in teams. The serve is always from this side of the court. Boys versus girls. Girl starts serving. You are to defend. Danny, take a seat. He still plays green balls only. We play to 11 points. At 6, a changeover. Girls get an extra point if they hit the target with a wide serve and then win the rally. Boys get an extra point if they hit the target with return and then win the rally. You receive. Let's go. While they play, let's touch on mental preparation issues. For anybody coaching players who begin to compete in tournaments, it is very important to properly interact with their parents. If the psychological environment around the player is pressing him, then all your work will be in vain. 
If the parents regularly criticize the player after a lost match, he will most likely lose confidence at the most important moment. With sets played to four games for this age at 2 all in the deciding set, set, the player who is routinely scorned after matches will start thinking about what, he will, what will happen to him if he loses and will lose for sure. So if you cannot reach mutual understanding with parents and prevent them from after-match critique, then you would better finish working with this player, since, you, so, since your efforts will be fruitless. You will not be able to develop a good player if he is under pressure from his parents. You have to make them fearless, confident, self-dependent. But putting a player under pressure would ruin the required qualities of a future champion. That is why you have to battle for the psychological comfort for the player and his family. This is way more important than forehand or backhand. A 2 all and use, the player will make a double fault on serve, not because he, is poor s uh, he has poor second serve, but because he will start thinking what he will have to say to his parents after the match if he loses it. Talking about tournament scheduling, try to select tournaments so that your player would have more wins than losses. Do not overplay in tournaments to avoid the technique slippage. The level of skills is more important than current rating and results. Strive to develop your player for the long run. Развивайте игрока долгосрочно. Давайте последний раз. Поменяйте сторонами. Пару розыгрышей поменяйте okay. сторонами. Okay, change sides. Заходите. A couple пьер. more rallies. Next stage group players, please come in. Демьян, уступи. Dimian, let him play. As I have said, during an hour and a half practice, we spend at least half an hour on drill that would include serve and return, since these are the basic skills for the match. The kids have to announce the score themselves, loudly and clearly. This ensures their concentration and focus. To win in 10 and under age group, it is vital to keep focus throughout the entire match. If you watch kids playing, they will often forget to keep the score line, to announce the score, which means they have lost the focus. During the practice session, you have to make uh, them uh, you have to make them keep th that focus and to control their degree of involvement. Last one. Собрали все мячи, все полоски. Collect all the balls and all target marks. Thanks to the younger sportsmen. Заходите, старший. Next age group, 12 and under, please come in. Four players we have here, two girls and two boys. Ruslan Serajuddinov was in three finals uh, of Tennis Europe this year, one title in Baku. Half of, uh, half of his season was ruined due to a non-tennis related accidental injury. That is why he Anastasia missed the year-end tournament of the top eight. Anastasia has just resumed playing tournaments recently. Since she had a spell of fast growth, she is now relatively high for 2005 birth year. She recently came third in a Category 2 event in Sochi. Nicole was born in 2004, Marat 2005. He studies too well at school, plays few tournaments because of that. Do 
do a few rounds of warm-up. We will also start with fitness. In their case, it is spe specialized fitness training, which includes elements required in tennis. I will draw your attention to some fine details here, which we need to keep in mind, in order for these exercises to be most relevant specifically for tennis. Yes, you have a, s a training session as per usual schedule. On Saturdays they have a, a competitive session. They do their training in a form of various games with keeping score. In teams, sometimes doubles, sometimes in as a mini tournament of tie breaks. Okay, enough. Crossover steps. One way. Split step. One of the exercises you can include into warm-up or into fitness preparation. The bulk of intention here is to the cross step, uh, crossover step at the beginning of the recovery from a shot. It has to be long and from a wide base. For this skill to develop, they necessarily need to get into habits to lower the center of gravity and to, uh, to bend the knees properly before that crossover step. If they stand too high after the, sh after the shot, the crossover step will not be good enough. They have to learn to load the outside leg to be able to make a fast crossover step towards the center. The other side now. Go ahead. Wide base. Split step. Crossover. One more time. Next exercise, and I will point out two fine details in it. We do four spurts to the targets. If I raise hand, they run backward. If hand is down, they run forward. Nicole, you start. We touch target with opposite hand. One more. Well done. Quicker. Quicker, quicker. Well done, Ruslan. Faster, faster. Change, Marat. They do not know the direction in advance. We try to make the task to resemble the situation in, in a real rally as much as possible. Have a look at two important points in this exercise. We use cones and not flat target marks. If you use flat marks, you will make the, the players bend over. They will not be able to do it only by crunching. That would be in unnatural, and it is not usual to uh, move during the play. They would be bending their lower back and lose balance. You will make the player use his lower back to reach those. They always have to keep control of the trunk, have to develop core muscles for this purpose. In all shots, not to allow their upper body to recline. The top, the top rated players of birth year 2005 are already good enough to never do that. You will never see shots like this from the top five players of this age, neither among girls nor boys. They all keep their legs in wide base, no matter if it is closed or open stance, they all keep their upper body straight up. Remove the cones.
and one more exercise for core muscles, which is rather a test. I saw it from Gerald Cordemy, the head fitness coach at Murat Agli Academy. He currently works with uh, David Goffin. A player does a plank, you hold his legs and let one of them loose. Not much has to happen. If the player leg drops all the way to the floor, this means he is not a player as yet. Next, Ruslan. Many injuries that some Russian players have happen because the core muscles are not worked out properly, both front and back. You sometimes feel that one of uh, hands is loaded a bit more, then you let this one go. You see, I felt some disbalance and spotted the leg which was bearing more weight and then, uh, than the other. Keep them balanced. Last one. Warm up from half court. The main thing we are going to do now is drills with a key shot and with high intensity. We have work on those elements which either cause errors in a match or where the player gives the control of the point to the opponent. To hit endless, endlessly in stationary situation makes little sense. This is why we need to work on difficult situations with high intensity. Moreover, at this age, the juniors are beginning to develop their personal style. You have to take into account physical parameters, anthropometric parameters of your player, his mentality specifics, and to shape his playing style in harmony with those. For instance, it is clear that Anastasia will be uh, an aggressive attacking player. To allow long rallies will not be in her interest. Her, her weapon is ball speed and we focus on that. In a group training session we have to personalize the drills and to offer each player more drills that would suit his style the most. Ruslan likes to approach the net. He is fearless. He has free mind and tries to advance to the net no matter what the score is. So uh, his time in practice is more heavily biased towards volleys. As much as possible we do it with live ball because at this level to work with basket feet in a group uh, will do, we'll, we'll do that quite rarely, almost never. It doesn't make much sense. Go to the baseline. As I said, we work on speed, strength, balance, to build strong and elastic muscles and to make the fitness training more personalized. At this age, the fitness training becomes more individualized and it takes into account the individual situations and goals. It is obvious that a player who is 175 meters high and a player who is 150 high have to do some somewhat different set of exercises. Two players with different stamina level have to do different set of exercises. That is why fitness training in group only, exactly similar for everybody, does not make much sense. And at least once a week they should have an individual fitness training. Moreover, they need to work on flexibility, both because this would prevent or, or reduce injuries and to recover faster after workout or a match. Everybody knows how flexible Djokovic is, for instance. Uh, that may be too much, but at this age they have to put much effort to develop flex flexibility. They have to have a well thought out routine for warm-up and wind-down routine after practice. 
At the age of 12, they should uh, be doing some 20 to 30 minutes warm-up as a must and, a, and obligatory wind-down routine. In absence of such routines, they would put themselves on a road to injuries and to a short-lived and bumpy career. There will be many drills involving serve and return with high intensity. And it is important to stress that at this age you have to do a fair amount of sl slow motion video analysis of player's technique, because technique can deteriorate in just a couple of months for various reasons like a series of tournaments while on the road, or change of court surface, or some micro-injury which affects the biomechanics of stroke movement. So you need to shoot slow-mo videos regularly, at least once every two months, and to analyze them. Moreover, it is very useful to film their matches in order to work on tactical skills. They have to watch and see for themselves the points they lose due to poor shot selection or due to wrong targets they choose on the court. Okay, okay, let's start. Collect the balls. The space on this side of the court is too small here, so I'll, I will place the players closer to the center. In our practice sessions, I would feed the ball wider so that it would bounce and jump close to the side fence. Here I will have to fend with some safety margin. Marat and, Marat and Nicole this side, Anastasia and Ruslan over there. First tactical situation is one where the opponent pulls you wide off the court playing to your backhand and you have to return the ball cross court and get back into the rally. Players on this side will have the advantage of knowing that the opponent will be targeting this area on, on the first shot. And to compensate for this, the other side will receive two points if they return to the marked area and then win the rally. Ruslan, you start. Move two meters to the side. Otherwise it would be too easy, as I cannot feed the ball wide enough, because of the spectators sitting there. Ready? And now start a free rally. One point each on this side. Change. Stop, it's wrong ball, not ours. Next. Out. Out. Two, two points to Ruslan. We similarly play in teams with players interchanging. Two rallies each on one side, one rally each on the other. That side should focus more on depth and fast recovery from the first shot. This side should focus on using the advantage of positioning on the court. They presumably took control of the rally, moved the opponent wide off the court and have to finish the point either with down the line or an attacking wide cross court. Out. Out. Next. 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 You can allow small outs to be played in order to encourage more rallies if you don't keep score of the drill. Go in. Change the sides. High intensity in every drill. We do not need 30 shots rallies. I can bring up the stats that in, in, in the Pro Tour, the rallies where each player makes more than 7 shots are only 1% of total. Yes, just 1% of all points played end in more than 14 shots for both together. So those usual long practice rallies like keeping the ball cross-court forehand to forehand have very little to do with what happens in a real match. Uh, 66% of points in women and girls game and 70% on the men's side are over in four less shots. Serve, return and two more shots. 70% for men and 66% for women. That is why a practice rally needs to be intensive, fast, aggressive. 
Mind the quality of the shots, their speed and depth, not the quantity. If your player can play aggressively and deep, it is more important than if he can get the ball over the net 30 times in a row. Next. Okay. Now we will work on volleys. Boys on that side, girls here. At, well, at 12 years old, many players can volley well, standing in a meter away from the net, from a basket feed, from here and like this. They can get 90% into the court and to, and, and to make winner with the following shot. But this has, this has little to do with what is going to happen at high category tournaments. They have to play volleys on the move to get positioned and to move forward to finish a point. So we start from the baseline. I will feed a soft ball, the boys will play regular volleys and the girls will play drive volleys. After all, uh, for women tennis 90% of first volleys happen to be drive volleys. These are the starts. On the men's side 90% is regular volleys. One point each here, two points each there. Don't, don't mind the marked area. Out. Change. Next. Yes, they are going to make more errors, because it is a difficult drill. They have to find the ball with their feet, to get, in, uh, to get it in and to finish. But they are doing what we will need it to do in a match. If they were standing in one place killing every ball that comes in, in a match nobody would allow them to do this. They will not manage to get close to the net with a step in. Then they need to understand what is going to happen after their volley. That is why they, we necessarily need a rally to follow. Closer to the ball. Guys, focus. Well done. Do not stop. Nicole was running to it and you turned away. Good. Next. I think these guys are more nerv nervous than the younger guys were, because this is not the quality they are able to do in practice. Please do it calm and focused, okay? Do what you always do in practice sessions. The younger group was doing well, and you missed too many balls. Next. Good. Ghost to hit drive volleys. Boys to defend. Quicker, quicker. Bravo. Next, next. A bit closer. Well done, good rally. Good passing shot. Next. Good. Position yourself in the net. It's okay, it's okay. Next. Let them make more errors and let it look not as nice as if we were feeding the balls just from basket. But they are learning what they will need in a real match. And not just a nice and easy pattern which in fact has nothing to do with reality. Collect the balls. Quicker, quicker. Their training schedule per week is four or five times tennis in a group for one and a half hours, three times fitness, three or four times individual tennis practice. That is what they have now. They used to have two or three not long ago, now it's three to four. Okay, starting the inside. 
Mi Nikolin Ruslan, that side. Inside out and then a rally. Amount? As I said, tennis four to five times in a group for one and a half hours, three to four times individually and three times fitness per week. One and a half hour. The younger group has individual sessions for one hour. These guys have for, for one and a half hours. I don't see much sense in one and a half hour practice for younger kids or say two hour sessions for this age because with high intensity I cannot understand what they will do for two hours unless they sit for half an hour in total on a bench. Same with the kids. You can do everything you want in an hour if you collect the balls quickly, if everything goes smoothly and without delays. I don't see any sense to spend more time on court than that. It will reduce the effectiveness. Ready? I will feed the ball to the center. You run around to play forehand cross court and side out. And then a rally. This is another tactical situation, especially relevant for the boys. When the ball comes into the center, they run around and the, and the active attack starts. They have to make quick decisions, quickly read the ball, which you can run around. Next. You relax too early. Next. Faster, run around faster. Make a space for yourself. Here is an important detail. Anastasia made a mistake by letting the ball drop too low. She got the shot into the court, but first allowed the, the ball to drop. It is the ball reading mistake. She was watching the ball flying for too long, did not go forward to it, and left more time to the opponent, and did not get control of the rally in result. These sort of things you need to take into account. It was not an issue of making a soft shot or firm one. She could have met the ball two meters further into the court. It was a ball reading mistake. mistake. They have to learn to be quick in reading the ball and to position themselves in the best spot for it. Super. Change. Super. Out. Out. Next. Run around. A bit more speed. It was a good inside out. Run around. Out. Next. Clear the ball. Out. Out, out, Marat. Все в court, все Get it into the court with the first shot. There are nine people in their group playing on two courts and two coaches. So they have constant rotation. Those who win go to one court, those who lose to the other and back. Frequently change of drills. And this allows them to be ready for any opponent playing style. Marat, three Marat arrows in a row. Next you will go to, to collect balls. Next. Okay, collect the balls. I criticize for not starting a rally with first shot. The training group is an entity. If one of the players misses the first shot two or three times, he receives a brief and concise notice. Because he does not allow others to train, he breaks the rhythm of the drill. You don't necessarily need to a winner with your first shot. Make some safety margin above the net and on depth. Each one has to help the training of the, of the others. Only then a group will develop effectively. If somebody keeps shooting at the back fence with 
with the first shot, the coach will make to, uh, will make him to take a break to get the focus back and then return to the drill. Since there should be a rally played every second of the session, if the balls fly all over the place and on this side guys are just standing and watching those going into the net or going out, it would be no good for the session. Warm up the serve. At this age, the serve becomes a real weapon, especially for boys, but also for high girls like Anastasia. The serve can already be fetch many easy points, so there should be a lot of attention to the serve. And as I mentioned, we do not just hit serves from a basket, we do serves for, uh, followed by a rally. I like the, the words that I heard from some English coach, that we have brought up a whole generation of players who serve a ball and immediately turn around to the basket. They have to understand that after the serve they will get a return back and the rally will follow and that they will have to make a quick decision where to direct the next shot. And so they need to develop the uh, serve in the context of a rally that will follow. As I see, they, they feel tighter than the younger ones were. It's far from their normal level of play. Warm up a bit more. If the ball goes into the net, adjust the toss a little bit closer to the body. Here you are. When you work on serve, a lot of attention goes to the toss. If a child hits the ball away from the optimal contact point, the rest of the moves elements don't make much sense, since they all become secondary. You should have a clean toss for sure for the contact point to be correct. If the toss fluctuates, then the rest of your work will be inefficient. There is also the much discussed topic of pronation, and I covered it last year. It is the key to, to an active serve. Give me a ball. The juniors have to, to have relaxed arms, which would rotate during the swing to the ball to the inside, and this is called pronation, but it's only the consequence of a correct serve movement. We do not tell kids to do this intentionally, we tell them to rotate the relaxed arm into the ball, and then deep pronation happens just because of inertia. If you do a slow motion record of these players, and I have a lot of those in my smartphone, then you will see that uh, after contact with the ball, they all have the, the arm going like this, probably with the exception of Nathasia who haven't fully completed the work on reshaping her swing. And this move brings about a lot of energy to the shot, and by no means you can ignore it. Good. Let's do the same drill as the younger, younger kids did. Extra point for hitting wide serve target, and extra point for deep return. You will serve only the deuce box since uh, there are people near, near the head one. Ruslan and Anastasia on that side, Nicole and Marat here. You receive to the deuce box only. They play a team tie-break to 11. If the return is deep, the player gets extra point if he wins the rally that follows. Same for the server if he hits the target in the box. Move away the basket. Marat did great by driving Ruslan Marat off the court with the serve, but failed to finish the rally with the winner into the open court. He could have got an extra point here, but at least the skill we are working on now, he got it right. Contact point was too far away. Change sides. Ruslan to serve. While they play, 
Again, the main message that I wanted to deliver to you and what I'm mostly upset about is that we in Ru here in Russia ignore the worldwide tennis regulations. What you see on this slide is a page from ITF regulations from year 2013. From start and up to 10 years old, the kids should play the tournaments with the following types of balls, red, orange and green. As you all know, we have, the, uh, we have to play RTT tournaments in under 10 category with regular yellow balls. We are the only ones like this. Anywhere in Europe, the green balls have been used since long time ago, and I'm very concerned about it. I am 100% sure that playing yellow balls hurts the average level of players, hurts their technique, their technical skills. And our tennis is at least four years behind that of Europe because, of, because we play tournaments with yellow balls. We do have green tournaments here in Moscow for a ten and under category at Ostrovsky Academy. Great weekend tournaments, but there is a problem that uh, there that kids have to play up to seven matches a day, and it feels like a marathon to an eight or nine year old kids. That is very tough. I believe that the best decision that our federation can make to promote development in the country is, is to switch official ten and under age group tournaments to yellow uh, to green balls or at least to give the coaches, the parents and the players an opportunity to vote with their feet which kind of events they want to play. If we could play either yellow or green ball tournaments, I assure you that 80% of progressive coaches among those who I know personally would choose green balls events. We currently cannot use tennis system the way it is used everywhere in the world, because after orange ball stage the kids have to, to shift right to the yellow balls. And for instance, in case of Tatiana Novikova, who you saw before, I felt that problem clearly. With transition to yellow ball, we had to also replace her rackets with larger ones, which was still inappropriate to her. She, she played with 25-inch rackets, and we were forced to start with 26-inch, and her technique started to deteriorate immediately. We had to spend a lot of time feeding from the basket, which we had not done much before, and had to clean the technique. This would have not happened if she had an, an opportunity to play green balls events. Those kids that you saw would have been playing even better, I assure you. Our European colleagues struggle to understand why we are doing this. Last year, when I, uh, when I was at European Coaches Conference, I discussed this issue with many colleagues from all over Europe, and we found no single viable reason that could explain why our children here play with yellow balls before turning 10 years old. There is no logic in it, no research to back up the idea, no confirmation, unlike in Green Ball's case. This is just status quo. I believe we need to change this urgently, otherwise we would lose a few generations of players. Let's do a couple more rallies. So we work on those things that are most frequently needed in tournaments. We choose the most frequently occurring tactical situation. We do drills on shots that develop players, like for example inside-out cross-court, drive volley, serve return sequence. That is what will help your players to win matches. Last one. You touch the line, nice. Let's finish on that good shot. Let's thank the junior players. Ruslan and Nicole are flying to the city of Hantemansis tomorrow. They postponed their departure by a day in order to be here with us. Thank you. Well done. Get the balls on the marks. Together with our friends from Babala, we have a mini present for you. They provided balls for younger kids and the coaches, especially those of you who come from other regions and who have not yet tried to work with colored balls as per 10S system, please take a few cans to try. Thanks to go to our partner, the Babala company. I can assure you that uh, your players will progress much faster if you start using the 10S system. I see this myself every day with my own, own eyes, and I can measure the effectiveness of this approach in my own practical work on court, not just from some marketing videos or publications.